Illinois has some of the highest taxes in the country. When you combine the local and state sales tax, I think like up in Chicago, it's what, 12% plus? Uh, some of you living up in Chicago could probably tell me what your sales taxes are, but property tax is also high in the state of Illinois. And uh, that property tax continues to increase. One of the main drivers of that, schools. And uh, if you look at your property tax bill, the local school district has the uh, largest portion of that. And for those of you who don't know, Illinois has more than 850 school districts. I believe only one other state that might be California has more school districts than Illinois. But Illinois being the seventh most populated state has the second most school districts. That comes with six-figure administrator salaries and a whole bunch of other uh, benefits that go towards employees in administration. And if you start looking at some of the breakdown of how many students are in these districts that gets six-figure administrator administrator salaries. Uh, Some of these districts don't have many students at all. Uh, So there's a lot of costs associated with all of that. Something else, too, Illinois, we have a continued population decline year after year. We've seen the past nine years population decline with annual estimates from the U.S. Census. Plus, we have a decline in the number of students enrolling in K-12 through schools. So there's a lot of different factors involved there, but one thing that's not declining is the cost of teacher pensions. In Illinois, there are five statewide pension funds that the state manages. There's the uh, state employee retirement system, the state university retirement system, uh, the uh, Illinois General Assembly and judges retirement system, which is really, really bad. Uh, there's also the uh, the teacher's retirement system, which is uh, a very large retirement system. The fifth one is escaping me right now for whatever reason. But um, you've got uh, the teacher's retirement system is the largest. It's for all the state's teachers across the state, except for Chicago. Chicago teachers have their own pension fund. But for everybody else across the state, there's around 144,000 members of this teacher's retirement system. It's a pension system, so it's a defined benefit, not a defined contribution. So the you know the benefits guaranteed, and uh, the Illinois Constitution guarantees that the pension protection clause. For those of you who don't remember, in 2011, uh, they changed from tier one employees for state employees to tier two employees for state employees and teachers uh, with lesser benefits for the tier two employees. But there's also ideas about having teachers also uh, give to a, a different retirement account that they have more control over. So there's been an ongoing push to address the pension issue. We have an unfunded pension liability that is just increasing regularly. And that eats into how much tax dollars are available for other services, uh, like just educating kids, for instance. So yesterday in a House Personnel and Pensions Committee, there was a hearing about the status of several pensions, one of them being the teacher's retirement system. And uh, you had some uh, interesting things brought up. State Representative Stephen Reich, he is a Republican from Woodstock. He was talking with Andrew Bo Davis. He is the uh, spokesman for the teacher's retirement system. And he said that he's having conversations with people about a possible grand bargain of reducing benefits while increasing taxes. So check this out. There have been a lot of things said in the last week or so about the need for revenue increases, i.e. tax increases, to specifically go toward the uh, funding of the pension plans. How receptive, and Kristen, uh, this is a question for you as well. Um, How receptive are we going to be Uh, on both sides of the aisle to make a grand bargain here that may include revenue increases and um, some alteration of the benefit structure so that we're not constantly chasing our tail, especially in years where we have a uh, a really lousy uh, investment return, which, you know, the problem is, is that as benefits increase at 3% a year, we have a bad investment year and that, you know, that that ramp is going this way as far as benefits are concerned. We we have we have uh, uh, investments and stuff and then we have a bad year and it drops to here and we've got to start catching up from a much bigger gap. 
where is the possibility of a grand bargain with our state pension plans to provide what it is that we're going to need in order to bring these things to, you know, um, again, my business, my background is with the airline industry. I know what it looks like when a pension plan goes bad because I saw United American Delta Northwest, all the pensions, the airline pension plans go in the crapper in the lat, you know, when they all file bankruptcy, I don't want to see that for these folks. But the fact is, is that what kind of a conversation can we have that would establish an enforceable and rock bound grand bargain between the pension funds and the need for and and people like myself might be interested in talking about that if I'm going to get something in return. So I, there's 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 a lot in that question. I'm just going to take a couple of points. One thing I just want to be on record because it's super important for any of our members that are listening to hear this. Um, we do a solvency test every year as part of our actuarial study, and that solvency test has gotten better and better and better and better in my 20 years of doing this. So certainly don't want to scare anybody into thinking that we're going bankrupt or we're on the verge or anything. And and again, that has only gotten better over the last couple of decades since 1995, when the current funding plan was put in. So just want to be on record that, that with the, we're in okay shape, you know, we want to keep getting better, but we're in okay shape. Um, that point being made, you know, as to source of income, the pension funds don't care. If we can have a bake sale and sell enough Rice Krispie treats and that can get us in the right space, count TRS a proponent of that. And I will personally volunteer for as many shifts as I can take. So we'll see how many uh, you know Rice Krispie treats they can sell to make up for the $80 billion of unfunded liability in the teacher's retirement system. Uh, so while he says things are getting better, uh, there's still a lot of concern as to the cost of pensions down the road are going to get to a level where it's going to eat out any other taxpayer funding for other services. And uh, as you heard Stephen Reich say, he's he, a Republican from Woodstock. He says he's open to the idea of a grand bargain where you have tax increases in exchange for benefit reductions. That way you can fund the pensions how they need to be funded while reducing the uh, the promise that there is for those who are retired uh, or those in tier two or those who are new employees or however this grand bargain comes together. Uh, one other thing I do want to air from that conversation yesterday uh, deals with the idea of if they don't do anything, what's going to happen. But first, some phone calls. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Uh, good morning, Greg. Happy Friday. Yeah. Um, I I heard this. Uh, I don't think you can do anything to reduce pensions because uh, that would be a diminishment, which is not allowed in the Constitution. We have got you would have to amend the state constitution. That's you would have to file a, a measure, a resolution, and get the legislature to approve it to put it yes. up to voters to amend the constitution. But yeah, you're right. Exactly, and I don't think the uh, I don't think the Democrats who are bought and paid for by the unions are going to do anything like that. So anything, all this is is they're basically trying to say, look, see, we tried to do something, but the courts just won't let us do it. Well, they really need they haven't fixed the main problem, which is the Constitution. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if there's any appetite to do that. Obviously, you're pointing out there doesn't seem to be any political will at the state house to pull that off. Uh, one other call here. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Greg, there's no political will because they know what's happened to the pension fund. Started with Jim Egger. Every teacher, my parents included, never missed a damn payment of yep. their pension. Sure. They didn't miss a payment. Right. The government did. How <laughs> many projects got passed through and paid for by not paying into the pension? Why don't we cut somewhere else? Cut somewhere else and find the money somewhere else. They robbed from the pension fund to pay for other little pet projects, both sides of the aisle. This isn't a one-side thing. It's just now Pritzker's sitting there holding the bag. And like the last caller said, they'll say, we tried, we tried. Well, go ahead and slash all the benefits you want. See how many teachers you get now. Your pay yeah. sucks. The only thing you got is a decent benefit package and retirement. And then, yeah, and you're making some uh, points here that I think uh, you're going to hear a lot about in this ongoing conversation. I'm going to take a quick break and come back and uh, hear a little bit more from yesterday's discussion about pensions. So stay tuned. Talking about pensions, in particular, the teacher's retirement system and a hearing yesterday in a virtual uh, house committee for the state of Illinois had the teacher's retirement system there. And uh, State Representative Stephen Reich uh, talked about a, quote, grand bargain 
that he says is being discussed at the state house for tax increases in exchange for maybe benefit reductions i don't know uh but ultimately you've got the question of what happens and who's going to be on the hook for if nothing's done about the pensions increased costs does that mean that the state taxpayers are going to have to pay for this or is that going to have to be paid for by the local taxing body the school district and what happens if that's the case with school districts again getting most of your property tax dollars here is uh, state representative stephen reich and andrew bo davis from the uh, teachers retirement system uh, during yesterday's committee hearing didn't you tell me at one time, however, that it's not the state that's going to be on the hook for that difference, but the local, uh, the local um, school board or, or um, entity? Yeah, I, that, that's my guess. I don't mean this to be a legal opinion in any way, shape or form. Again, some of this is uncharted water. My guess is if you look at the plain language of the Social Security Administrative Act, that the school district is the employer. Again, we have sort of a weird bifurcated definition of employer where it's kind of sometimes the state, sometimes the school district when we're talking about retirement security. And that's why I don't want to give you an ironclad promise on that. But my guess is, is that the school district would be the employer in that particular case. I would like to see an opinion on that from your counsel. I I, I, I will talk to her again. I, I just, I'm not aware that anybody's gone here before. I mean, this may sort of be the tip of the the spear and we are not coordinated with social security. So, I mean, what I'd love to do is talk to Jeff Houck, who's the social security coordinator for the state. There are holes in our expertise when trying to answer this question. And and I'm not 100%, I have a great general counsel, she's fantastic, but I, it's tough asking her to comment on something that is a complex federal issue that she has literally zero experience with. Yeah, but we have 144,000 teachers who are going to be affected by this uh, ultimately. And the sooner we get to an answer on that, I think the better off we're going to be because we'll be able to maybe come to some sort of a patch for this thing. If we wait until 100,000 of those 144,000 are coming screaming at our doors saying, hey, I want my money and it all falls upon local school districts, our property taxes are going to go straight to Mars. So anyway, uh, I studios take the easy way out. WMAY FM.